Hi, everyone, and welcome. How's everybody doing today? Well, I'm Wendy, a new uh, SVP who's a Viking educator, and I'm so happy to be here. Today, we're going to be talking about stabilizers, and I promise you, I'm not going to bore you with the, this is what you do with knits, this is what you do with with wovens. I'm going to be talking about the slightly more obscured stabilizers, if you will. However, if you have any questions, stabilizer questions, or you need some advice, go ahead, type it in the chat, and Meredith and Amy, who are here backing me up today, um, will shoot those questions over to me. And if I don't know the answer, maybe Meredith or Amy can chime in because not only are they wonderful tech people, but they are sewers and embroiderers as well. So um, just shoot those questions out to us. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's, let's get going. So uh, the first one that I wanna talk about, it's called a so South batting. Some of you may have heard of it, some of you may not. Um, it is a wonderful iron-on fusible. Um, it has this, it maintains this wonderful surface and it is extremely pliable. So uh, we're kicking it old school today with just one camera, uh, forgive us. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to see um, some of the things that I'm going to show. But here, if you can see how thin that batting is, it is super thin, so very pliable, and it still has, it, it can still have the warmth for it. So I use this for a few different things. I don't necessarily use it as um, a, a quilt batting per se, um, but it can take the place of a quilt batting or I have a magic Poppins bag next to me. It can be used for quilted jackets. So you're getting the warmth without having um, something that's uh, very stiff. Now this jacket was uh, quilted on a long arm, certainly not by me. Um, it it is, does belong to a friend of mine, but she did use that super soft batting in here. And you can see that it is very pliable it is lighter weight, but it's still going to offer that quality of um, some warmth. Uh, you can also use it in um, as a stabilizer if you're doing some heavy quilting. So I was working on this project, and I'm going to hurry up and take it apart. It's going to be um, a cushion, a round cushion, and it's going to have a uh, foam in it. Uh, it opposed to um, stuffing. So I wanted to use the, the green foam to give it some, some body. But I did add a layer of the feasible batting here so that when it does sit on the, um, the foam, it has that nice uh, softness of it and it helps it curve a little bit better. Um, but you'll notice that when I did embroidery, I also did use a layer of tearaway stabilizer so that is going to um, that is going to help this design right here. I did this on the Who's Front of Viking Epic 2. These designs are from my Sonet, and then this one is from the machine itself. Um, and I use Design Creator to create this, and I use that new wonderful hoop, the 260 by 260 square hoop. So I was able to stitch something large out. And one thing you guys will find out about me is that I totally love cats and my favorite color is pink. Pink cat. Um, so I did use that. Now I wanna show you one little thing. While I was stitching this out, I was in my head because I wanted to stitch a front and a back so that the cushion is going to be reversible. And I did leave this wide open space because I am going to um, tough it with a, with a button on either side. Um, I'm sorry, the batting is called So Soft Batting, S-E-W-S-O-F-T Batting. Um, it can be found at uh, your local dealer. It is not something that you are gonna find at uh, your big box stores. It's not available there, um, but call your dealer and I bet you, they will have it. It's great stuff. So let me go back to this. I was telling you, um, 
I have the tear away back here, but I forgot to put it back here. And when I noticed after taking this off the hoop, because these designs were quite dense, this middle section doesn't lay as flat as this middle section. So I, did I stitch it? I forgot to put yellow in this one. I just noticed that. Oh man. Anyway, this one isn't, if, if you lay this flat, and I know it's hard to see, but if you lay this flat on the table, it has like that little um, bubble effect in the middle. And, and while it will be covered up, uh, it won't be as noticeable once I have it tufted with the covered button. Um, if this wasn't something that's going to be tufted, it, it may be noticeable and it may not make your project look this good. But for mine, it's not going to be a big deal. But I think I'm going to be stitching one of them over because I forgot yellow in one of them. But that's okay. Any questions on uh, the sew soft batting? Because I've got more to talk about. Okay. So far, nothing. So it can be used in multiple things. Uh, you can also use it as, like I said, a stabilizer. If you were doing, um, if you were doing some quilt squares in the hoop and the dense, uh, the design is a very dense quilted design. Um, you can put fuse some of that on the back of your fabric. And then when you go to quilt it, um, add another uh, layer of batting and it doesn't have to be the so soft that you add another uh, layer of. You can just use your, your normal, whatever you use, warm and natural or what's the other brands. Um, anyway, those, those battings completely up to you. But the one thing I do enjoy is like I showed you that jacket. It is super nice because you can have a quilted jacket that's not going to be um, like a suit of armor that's really stiff. Okay, my next one is a good one. It's not necessarily a, um, a stabilizer, but more of um, more of an, a batting alternative. And that is in our form. So this is in our form. See, it's quite thin. It is, again, something that is very pliable. So if you have to fold it up or bunch it all up, it comes right back to shape. Totally, totally love this. And I use this in uh, bags, mostly bags. Not gonna lie, this is what I mostly use it for. It is also great in things like uh, placemats, table runners. Um, it stitched through. It stitches very, very easily, even with multiple layers. So remember my Poppins bag I'm pulling from? Let me show you that Poppins bag. So this is a, a Poppins bag. Now, this one does have a frame in it, but as you can see, it is still very pliable. So this is something that I could possibly pack into my suitcase, um, thinking I'm going to bring some stuff home so I don't have a carry-on when I go but I have a carry on when I come back. So um, this will easily fold up into my suitcase, keep its shape, and then I can uh, pull it out and fill it up with goodies that I'm coming home from my trip. Is there an instance where I would not use stabilizer? There is only one instance, one. Let me show it to you. I got to duck down on the floor. Give me a moment. Good question. So this is marine vinyl, and this is um, cut work embroidery design. Um, it's just a simple little tote. These designs are on the Epic 2, um, and I believe they're on the Epic 1. I'm not sure if they're on the Sapphire or the Brilliance, but they, they very well might be. This is um, an older design, but like I said, this is marine vinyl. So I did, I did not use stabilizer with that um, because I was, I knew I was doing cut work. However, I did hoop my marine vinyl and there could be a downfall to that. I bought extra knowing I was going to hoop that marine vinyl. So if I ended up with a small um, or the indention of the hoop, that necessarily didn't want, want to come out. It wasn't going to bother me because I was going to cut around that. But if you have a project that needs, that you don't have that opportunity to cut a lot of way, 
then yes, I would have uh, used stabilizer and I probably would have used a sticky tear away um, behind that for easily removable. Um, it just, you, you have to think in advance, what is your end goal? And um, is the hooping gonna hurt, is, is it going to hurt my fabric? Is it gonna leave marks? Marine vinyl, it is ironable. If you iron it from the wrong side and not necessarily use a super hot iron. So it, it is it is ironable. Um, but I will be honest, that is the only time ever that I have never used stabilizer um, with my embroidery. That's it. Okay, there is one more question. Can that so soft batting be used when making baby birth cloths and baby quilts? Yes, it sure can. It's just, um, you would use it just like any other fusible batting. It is thinner, it is very washable. It is fusible, as, as I said, and um, yeah, you would use it the same as a regular batting, but you'll notice that it is a little bit nicer because it isn't going to, um, it's not going to be as bulky. So think about that. Um, I am working on another bag. Excuse me. It is not done. Um, so this bag, I have to uh, bind the edges. Um, in here, I did use it as, as the body. For my bag um, uh, and I did that on purpose because I did not want this to be a bulky bag this is a design from uh, my sonet this is a, a, a large hoop the turnable hoop uh, embroidery uh, and it has applique thread velvet and yarn yarn couching applique uh, yarn couching in it um, this was a fun design I purposely did not want too much body to this bag or stiffness because my thought was I was going to be quite glamorous at the grocery store. My grocery store, uh, my local grocery store uh, stopped carrying plastic bags. They only have the um, paper bags and you have to pay for those paper bags. So I just got into the habit of just taking um, my bags with me. And I wanted to do a few more of the cloth bags because I can put those in the washer opposed to what they call those reusable fabric bags. Those aren't necessarily uh, machine wash friendly. So I started making a few bags that um, are a little bit more stylish that I can actually just throw in into the washer. Um, so um, there's a question here. Is a cutaway stable or washable? Yes, cutaways are, um, they are washable. Cutaways are meant to live in your project. So yeah, I don't know of anyone that is not quote unquote washable. Um, they're meant to live in your project. So yes. Um, would the magic hoop work with marine vinyl, the magnetic hoop? Um, I did not try the magnetic hoop knowing that I wasn't stabilizing it. So I did use, um, uh, a standard hoop, you know, the two piece hoop. I just, um, I didn't even try it, but maybe we can experiment with that. Uh, and I can let you guys know any questions on that. So let me go back to the, in our form real quick. Um, I did tell you that it is an abatting alternative. Um, it, it's easily stitched multiple layers. Um, it does add dimension. It's quite pliable and, Oh, let me show you one other thing. Um, I did this book. Karen Charles did, um, if you go to the Who's Fern of Viking website and go to inspiration and you'll see what's new with Karen Charles. Uh, I think it was about a year ago or so. Uh, she created a, a book very similar to this. Um, and we put um, behind the embroidery. This is a very dense um, quilted embroidery design. And behind it, as we were embroidering it, we did put some of this in our form behind it, um, behind, so I put the in our form, I hooped a stabilizer, then I put the in our form on top of that, and then this is marine vinyl. Again, very nice, it has the old girl look to it. This one I did find at um, Hobby Lobby, so if you're interested in that look of vinyl, that's where I got it from. So, Stabilizer hooped in our form and then my marine vinyl. 
and then I did um, the stitching. And what the in our form is going to do is you can see it made the design where there is not heavy stitching, this, um, it popped out. So it makes it very dimensional. So this can be done with, um, with any kind of heavy um, quilting design. And I know that my Sonet does have some quilting designs that are very similar to that. Um, I forgot to look up what collection this is from. This is a Husqvarna Viking collection. Um, and we can try and look that up. The number, I do believe it's still available from uh, your local dealer. So that's, that is the in-arm form. Okay, I have another question. I'm looking to embroider the back of a denim shirt. What stabilizer should I use? For the back of a denim shirt, um, I would use probably something like um, just your standard tearaway. I don't think you need to get really fancy with that. If your design is quite dense, you do want to think about the denseness of the design. Does the design match the fabric? So I wouldn't put, no matter how much stabilizer I use, I would not put something, let me see, I don't have anything. I would not put something like this. These are pretty dense. I wouldn't put that on Batiste. So you want to think about it ahead of time. So what is my design? What is the fabric I'm using? And then that's going to help me determine what my stabilizer is going to be. Depending on what um, design you're using, a standard tearaway should be okay um, for, for your um, shirts. But if it is a very dense design, there is a, a heavier tearaway that you might want to use. Most stabilizers, you should not have to use more than one, except there is an instance I did, and I'll get to that later. So um, I hope that helps you. Um, also, while we're on, on the subject of it, um, needles. I tend to go for the needle that is proper for the fabric. So if I am embroidering on denim, I may use a denim needle or a 90 top stitch needle for when I'm embroidering. If I'm embroidering on Batiste, I will probably go with the 75 needle. So I not only match my stabilizer, but I also try and match my needle with that, with, um, with my fabric. So I know there's universal needles, 90 and, and 80. Universal doesn't necessarily mean it will stitch on everything with no issue. I don't know why it's called universal. That would be, you know, a, a question for someone who creates, who makes manufactures needles. Um, but I do match my, my fabric. So if I'm sewing a knit and it's a waffle knit, I will probably go with something like a... Uh, a ballpoint needle opposed to using a different needle. So let me tell you a story. I was out, I was out traveling a few weeks ago and I was at a dealer and um, one of the attendees, she brought in this nice um, uh, polo shirt and she paid quite a bit of money for this polo shirt. And so she embroidered a design on it. And after a while, after a few washings, that design started to perforate around the design. So she brought it in asking what she can do, not necessarily to save the design, but possibly what can she do to correct the issue so that she can embroider over that design. Because this shirt, I guess it cost her a good amount of money and she just didn't want to make it a Goodwill shirt. So I did suggest to her that she wants to use a fusible, no show mesh behind it. And then she might also um, want to use um, another no show mesh and float it behind. But when I looked at the shirt up close, it looks like she used a sharper needle, like maybe a micro tack. So I know a lot of ladies love their micro tacks. Um, again, I go with what needle matches my fabric is what I'm going to do, what I'll do. And if you're not sure what needle matches your fabric, um, for those of you who have a Wi-Fi, um, a Wi-Fi capable machine like the Epic, the Epic 2, the Sapphire and the Brilliance, you know that you have the sewing advisor built into your machine. So it will tell you what needle you should be using for that particular fabric. For those of you who do not have 
um, one of those Wi-Fi capable machines, it's okay because guess what? We have an app for that. So you can go onto your app store, um, whatever it is for Mac and whatever it is for um, droids. I don't remember what they're called offhand, but let me show you that really quick. I have it here on my phone. So if you look right here, I got to kind of look at it sideways. Um, right here is my sewing advisor. So if I click on that, in there, you're going to see where you have sewing, quilting, embroidery, you have needles. And not only do you have a needle guy, but you have a stabilizer guide. So if you're out and about and you can't remember the words that are coming out of my mouth today, no worries. You can look it up. It's right here on your phone. It's a great app to have, not just for the stabilizers, but for the needles as well. So if you don't have it, get one. They're awesome. The first time it freaked me out because it also has the uh, the monitor on it for your sewing machine, for the Wi-Fi capable machines. I kept hearing a, a thing going off on my phone and I was thought it was my Facebook, but no, it was my machine telling me two rooms over that, hey, you're almost out of bobbin. How awesome is that? Okay, that's just my little rant. Um, there's a question here. What hoop did you use marine vinyl? The hoop that I used was the 360 by 260 hoop for that um, for this bag, and it fit it. It fit nicely. Like I said, I did buy some extra so that because this design pretty much did take up uh, most of that hoop. Any questions on any of that? Okay, I have so much more to say. All righty, put that aside. My next stabilizer is. Let's talk about. Let's talk about Aqua Magic. This is one of my favorite stabilizers too. I do use Aqua Magic a lot. Um, if you look behind me, uh, this is a mobile that I made. And let me see if I can lift up. There you go. Can you see that? So that is freestanding lace. Now remember when I said that you don't necessarily need to use two layers of stabilizer. Um, for this instance, I did. These are pretty dense butterflies. And not only um, what I did was, again, designs from my, my Sonet. There are three different butterflies. They were all pretty much the same size, but as you can see on here, they are different sizes. So I went into my Sonet, the software, and I resized all of them down. So each individual butterfly had three different sizes. And even though I changed the stitch count, I used resize opposed to scaling, those are still some pretty dense designs. And to create and to stitch out free standing uh, lace embroidery, all of those, those threads are like intertwined with each other. They're like creating little loops and hooks and stuff like that so that when you wash away the stabilizer, it just doesn't come into a pile of um, stitches or, or thread, I should say. And um, that's how they're made and that's the purpose of it. So they can get quite dense. So I did use two layers of the um, Aqua Magic and I filled my hoop. Again, I used the 360 by 220 hoop. I was able to get quite a bit of um, butterflies in one hooping. I had my app so it would tell me when I was almost out of bobbin um, because one hooping did take nine hours to do. It was kind of nice because it gave me a chance to clean up my room. I did my dishes. I think I mopped some floors that day and I was able to just let the machine go. And the re and let me tell you why I did use two um, layers of stabilizer. When it was traveling from one to the other, when you fill up your hoop with something like that, you don't want, you want to be conscious of this, of how it's going to stitch out. It's going to stitch out how you brought the designs in but I don't want to have them stitch all on one side and then come over and do the other side or stitch in this quarter or this quarter and then so on. I have them dispersed so that um, the stabilizer wasn't being pulled in to one side as I was stitching out these, these butterflies. So maybe one butterfly stitched here and then it came down to this corner and stitched up this corner so that it was evening out um, the stabilizer so there wasn't all that compensation and that pull coming um, while I was stitching them out. 
when that happens, it could possibly pop out of your hoop. So again, sometimes you, you need to just think ahead. Okay, uh, what needle did you use for the marine vinyl? Oh my goodness, that is a very good question. Um, I honestly don't remember. I may have used, and, and, and don't laugh at me when I say, I think I used a universal needle. I think I did, um, except um, there's not that much embroidery on it. If you look at it, that is a cutwork design. So I did, I, I used the cutwork needles for, for the machine. Um, so it would tell me the machine would stop and say, put in, you know, the green needle or put in the yellow needle. But I do think for the embroidery, I think I did use um, a universal needle. So one thing to keep in mind when you're stitching on um, marine vinyl or even even leather, that fabric doesn't heal necessarily. It, well, it doesn't. It doesn't heal. So you want to have a good plan before you jump in because if you, you really can't take out the embroidery because it will show through, especially um, leather. Uh, marine vinyl, I don't think I've ever had an issue. I love stitching on marine vinyl. It stitches like butter. It's so cool. So yeah, don't laugh. Universal needle. I know it's, I don't think I had a leather needle um, at the time and I just needed to get that project done. So don't judge me. Okay. Any questions on the aqua magic? Nope. Okay. Let's toss that aside. My second favorite is aqua magic plus. And the reason why I like Aqua Magic Plus is because there are times that I can't hoop something. Truth be told, I'm a hooper. If ever I have the chance to hoop something, I'm going to try and hoop it, opposed to floating it. I, I have floated so many things in the past, and just it's been a nightmare, and I feel like I can't walk away from my machine. Even though I did a basting and then I did a basting around the design too, I just, I'm not comfortable with, um, and this is just me, I'm just not comfortable not hooping. But um, so if I have the opportunity to hoop, I'm going to hoop. Believe it or not, you will get a better stitch out if you hoop opposed to, um, opposed to floating. So... I know some of you were in my um, my SoNet Facebook Live and we did these black cats. I showed you how to do it. And um, today is National Black Cat Day, uh, Appreciation Day, just so you know. And so this design, I used the Aqua Magic Plus because where I positioned these designs wasn't necessarily in the best place for me to try and hoop it. Also, I didn't want to hoop this because this sweater, it is kind of thin. It's on the thinner side and I didn't want to take the risk of it stretching because if I stretched it in the hoop and then if I were to stitch the design, even though it's just applique, if I were to stitch the design on a sweater that is, or, or a knit that is slightly stretched, what's going to happen is it's going to bubble around it so I decided to use Aqua Magic Plus so that I can easily stick my sweater into place where I needed it to be. And it was probably in the dead center of the hoop just to cover all bases. I know for sure I stitched, um, I did a basting stitch around the design and I did a basting stitch in the hoop. So I did both. Um, again, because I've had so many instances in the past where, um, Things just didn't work out for floating. Um, and I chose Aqua Magic so that I can wash it away so that when you look in the back, um, a lot of times I wear my cardigans um, open, not buttoned at all. So then you don't see all kinds of stabilizer and there's no stabilizer making my garment stiff as I wear it. So that's a, a great thing for that. Also, you can use Aqua Magic or Aqua Magic Plus if you want to embroider on uh, terry cloth towels. Um, I also like to use for terry cloth towels, um, it's called tear and wash. So it is a tear away that is made with um, microfibers so that when you, you can tear it away, tear as much as you can away. 
And then whatever doesn't come away, you can either throw it in the wash and get it off, or you can use a, a cotton swab to get some of it off. This is a little harder to use a cotton swab with than the Aqua Magic um, because it is it is thicker. So if you were doing a, a more dense design on a terry cloth towel and you don't want the stabilizer in the back, I don't like seeing the stabilizer on the back of my towels. Um, I would use a tear away wash so that um, the microfibers that are in there after it's washed away, those stay behind and help you support um, the embroidery design. So on the back of this towel, and this is an applique, um, see, applique, there is, oh, a cat. It's my spirit animal. So on the back, you can see that there's no stabilizer there, but the tearaway is behind um, the stitching. Uh, supporting it. So then you can uh, have a nice towel. I don't embroider very many towels for myself. I wish I had the time to do that. I do make them for gifts, especially um, they make great wedding gifts. Um, so that is an option there to um, for, for towels or things like that, that are washable um, so that you can wash it out ahead of time. Any questions on any of that? Any other obscure incidences that you have that you want to ask about stabilizer? No? Okay, moving on. So with any um, with any terry cloth uh, project, you do want to use a topper. And I use um, this is the wash, this is a a solvy, a soluble film, and this will rinse away. It tears easily. And it really does keep your um, stitches from sinking in. So remember that gal with the um, polo I was telling you about? She didn't use a topper. Um, she did confess to that, that she didn't use a topper when she embroidered out her design. And even though you do a sample maybe and you say, oh, it looks okay. I don't really need a topper because you want to try and, and, and save a little bit on the stabilizer it very well may come back to haunt you like it did this gal because it looks good when you first take it out of the hoop, but what's going to happen when you wash it and you dry it and you wear it? it? It is going to make a difference. It may not show a bad embroidery at the moment when you take it out of the hoop, but it may come back and be a bad embroidery after many uses. So again, anytime I do something that is any kind of knit, any kind of, um, something that's ply uh, that has a pile, corduroy, uh, fleece, any of those things, I always, always use a topper. Um, aren't you worried after multiple washes, the wash away should be washed out of the stitching? Well, this particular tarim wash, and you can look it up, it does, like I said, it, this tarim wash has um, microfibers in it that should stay behind the embroidery part. So no, I'm not worried. This towel has been washed many, many times because it's a kitchen towel. So it's been washed and it was probably washed in hot water. So, so far it all looks good. So experiment. Any other questions on that? Okay. So let me see what else I have here. Oh, uh, clear and melt. I know some of you are afraid of clear and melt or sometimes it didn't work for you or, or just it didn't work out. The one thing I have to say about clear and melt is you do need to read the instructions and the iron does need to touch the stabilizer for it to turn into these little balls that you flake away. And that's what a clear and melt is used for. Um, clear and melt, um, is used as a topping. So if you were to um, do a towel that's not necessarily going to go through the washer, you could use the tear and wash and tear as much as a way that you can and use a um, clear and melt on the top so that you can melt it away so that you can easily, you know, fold that up and give it as a gift. And it so the towel looks fresh and new and it doesn't have to go into the washer. So you do have those two options. Um, but like I said, you really need to read the instructions, experiment with it. 
it has become one of my um, go-to for certain things that I did not want to wash. Um, but not only is it used as a topper, it can also be used as a backing. And I have used it as a backing. Um, can you use press and seal wrap as a topper? Um, gosh, that's a good question. I never use press and seal for anything that, um, except in, in my kitchen. Um, actually a friend of mine told me this little hint. She uses press and seal on the top of her refrigerator. So you know how your refrigerator gets yucky? She puts press and seal up there so that, and then when she goes, when it gets yucky, she peels it away and puts a new piece up there. That's what we use press and seal for. Um, I've never had luck with using press and seal for its actual purpose. Um, it just doesn't work out. Um, so I can't say I have ever used it um, as a stabilizer. I don't, I don't know what it will do. Um, what if I don't get it all away? Is it, and I try and iron whatever it is. So um, I'm not going to say no, don't use it. I'm just going to say experiment with it. I've just, I, I, you know, never heard that one before, but thank you for that. Um, how can I use large pieces of leftover stabilizer? Well, I, I'm going to show you a few things that you can do with leftover um, stabilizer. One, you can cut them to smaller pieces if you can, that will fit into smaller, smaller hoops. Um, just get yourself a little, uh, some containers so that you can separate them. Um, but you can use them for um, smaller hoopings and, and things like that. Uh, I know in the past, um, some people used to use their, um, the water soluble stabilizer. They would put it in a spray bottle, shake it up real good, and use it as a uh, a water as a as a water based spray stabilizer. And they would keep it in their refrigerator to keep it from glumping and stuff like that. I don't hear too many people actually doing that anymore. But I did. I have not done that. Um, so, but it is a way that you can possibly, if you use a lot of spray stabilizer. Um, it's an option that you can do, um, use it for other things. And I will show you some other things that I use with some leftover pieces. Um, there's also a question, what is a topper? A topper is just that. It is, um, a, it's a stabilizer that you place on top of something. So you have your stabilizer that, that's hooped and or your garment that's hooped. And then you have your, let's say you have your towel. And then you take a piece of um, a water soluble film or the clear and melt. You would put that on top of your project. So then all of your embroidery is on top of that. So it's a protective layer between your um, project fabric and the stitches. And it really does help from those stitches being sucked in or pushed in to um, the grooves of that of your fabric. Did that. I hope that helped. Whoever asked that question, I hope that helps. Okay, moving on. Oh, let me show you a project that I did with the clear and melt since we've got some time. This is a little tray. So it's a picture frame. And inside of it, I'll get close. If you look at that design, that has um, a wing needle design in it. So it leaves it open. And I created this um, design with um, design shaping to create the, um, the two borders. And then these designs, again, they come from my Sonet. There are just so many designs on my Sonet that you could be so creative with them. Um, so this is a, um, again, a design that um, has a wing needle in it. So what this is behind there, this is linen. And if any of you have worked with a good quality linen, you know that before you cut it, you need to pull a thread. You need to take the time to pull the thread to find the straight of grain. And that takes time. And you know that linen is also has that little slinky quality to it. So before I stitched this out, 
I sprayed this well with, um, I don't want to say well, I sprayed it with a product called Terial Magic. It is a um, sprayable um, stabilizer. It, it makes your fabric much stiffer than, um, than just a regular spray starch would do. So I sprayed it with that because once I pulled that thread and I cut it to the size that I need it to go into my hoop, and I did hoop this. If ever, I, I always try and hoop your linen. Please just try and hoop your linen and be careful not to do too much stretching of it. Uh, linen is a fickle fabric, but it is just a gorgeous fabric um, along with that. Um, so I sprayed this with spray starch. And my thought process was, I did not want to have to wash this project because I didn't want to lose the, the stabilizer behind it because of where it's going, but I did not want to leave a water soluble uh, stabilizer just live in the back of it. It probably wouldn't hurt it, but I didn't want to because if I actually plan on using this tray for what I made it for, and that's for my Sunday tea parties for one, when I'm actually home, I'm going to put a hot teapot on this and I don't want the, the heat of the teapot to go through this plexiglass and I did put plexiglass in it opposed to glass. I didn't want the steam of that to go through and start clumping up the, uh, wa the wash away stabilizer behind it. So what I decided to do was use clear and melt as my backing so that when I was, when I was done with the embroidery, I wouldn't have to wash the linen and lose its shape because once I had the stabilizer in there, it was a heck of a lot easier to cut that linen to the shape of um, the, the picture frame that I have here. So I used the clear and melt and I was able to just use my iron following the directions, touch my iron to that stabilizer and it turned into little balls. And then I was able to dust it away. And then I was able to put my linen in, um, in the tray. So that was, that was a huge help. A lot of people don't realize that clear and melt can be used as a backing. And sometimes it's, it's, it's a great backing to, to reach out for. Um, I know Mickey is, is beginning to use clear and melt a lot more as well. Um, but you do need to, um, you know, read the directions, experiment with it. Just you got to play. Anytime you have something new, it may not always work out for you the first time. Just grab some scraps and just, just play with it. Make some notes. Um, also with my stabilizers, and I did, what I like to do is we used to have um, these little wraps that go around um, our stabilizers and we were able to label them and, um, and know what the stabilizer is. So these, these are the instructions. It's there. What I normally do and what a lot of other people probably do as well is I just fold this up and I stick it inside so that it is always there. Um, there was a time when I didn't do that and I would just have my stabilizer. I would wrap it up and throw it in a drawer. And there was times that I couldn't tell the difference between the fibrous, the Aquamagic, the fibrous uh, wash away, or was that... Um, or was that a no-show mesh? So yeah, there was times, I'm not gonna lie, I was in the in my room sucking on it and seeing which one is that. So I'm not gonna lie, it's not gonna kill you. But it's not something you necessarily want to do. So funny story there. <laughs> funny story. You know, I'm I'm a mom, my girls, they're older now. And I remember one time my daughter my younger daughter, she was sitting in my sewing room while I was sewing something out and she picked up the, um, the, the waterworks, the wash away film. And she said, Hey mom, what's this? And I, I told her, I explained to her what it did and what it was. And she's like, can I eat it? And I said, well, I don't know. You want to, because you know, it dissolved. And I said, I don't know, but I'll pay you a dollar to try it. And she said, mom, what does that taste like? And I said, well, it really doesn't taste like anything. Um, but it, Think about those breath things that you put on your tongue and it dissolves. It's very much like that, but it doesn't have the minty taste. And I said, I'll pay you a dollar if you try it. So I gave her a little piece. She tried it. Had to give her a dollar. I know you're probably thinking she is just a horrible mom, but you know what? I don't have a farm. So what else do you have kids for if you can't have fun with them, right? So 
Let's see. There's another question. Um, I don't know what Weblon is. Weblon Plus I use for t-shirts. Are there more possibilities for this stabilizer? I've I've never heard of Weblon. Is that some is that something like a, a, a no-show mesh um, where it's very thin and it's um, made for, for knits? If, if Weblon is um, like a no-show mesh, yes, there are, other, there are other uses for that type of stabilizer. Um, that is a very thin stabilizer, extremely pliable. So it is something that you can, um, it can live in your projects. And I hope you don't hear that lawnmower that's going outside. Um, you th That's a stabilizer that, yes, it can live within your project. So when you're doing like maybe building quilt blocks in the hoop and it's, you know, you need a stabilizer, go for that no-show type of mesh stabilizer because when you're done with your quilts, you don't have to necessarily worry about picking all of that out. Sometimes when you use a tearaway, a tearaway, if you don't get it out, your project has that little crunch sound to it. Um, there's been plenty of times that I thought, oh, it'll just live in there. Eventually, a tearaway will dissolve if it's something that's going to be washed. But if it's not going to be washed, the tearaway doesn't have a chance to dissolve because it's not seeing water. But think of it as um, the no-show mesh is something, a, a stabilizer that you can use that can live in a project. So if you're doing... Um, in the hoop projects, like little bags or something like that. Again, that's a good stabilizer to use because when you're done, you can just um, trim around it, whatever you don't get out. It could just be part of your project and live in there and no harm, no foul. No one will even know that it's even in there. So I hope, um, I hope that answered your question. If you have more, keep them coming. Um, I have one more stabilizer I wanna talk about and um, it's one of my favorite. It's one of my go-tos, and it's called um, Stitch and Ditch. So this is um, like a paper type kind of stabilizer, and I use this a lot um, for doing decorative stitches. It works great with decorative stitches. So I have a little sample here, and I want to show you. So I stitched these decorative stitches out. And this is um, Stitch in the Ditch. And this one is just a regular tearaway. So with these decorative stitches, I have some open areas. And you'll see that in the closed areas, it may not be that difficult to pull it away. See, I'm pulling it away. And this is just a regular stabilizer. But then when I get down to those finer stitches you'll see here i'm kind of struggling with it it's not as easy to pull out and yes i have my finger on the stitch itself and i'm pulling at it ladies you don't want to just grab it and pull it and just rip off your stabilizer like that because a lot of times with a delicate stitch what you're going to do is you're going to end up pulling that stitch out so put your finger on it and start tearing it away okay like that but if you notice, that's the back of it. So where that open area is on these stitches, that stabilizer is still in there. It's not as easy to get out. So I would need to spend a little bit of time picking that out. Whereas if I use oops, this is the other stabilizer, this will come out a little bit easier from those open stitches. So I still have to pick at it a little bit, but it's going to come out a little bit easier. See, I'm pulling it out a little bit easier. Um, again, this will eventually dissolve in um, through washings or through time, and you won't even know that it was there eventually, but this is such an easy tearaway stabilizer um, that you can get most of it out just by tearing it off. So I do use this a lot for my decorative stitches. 
I also use it when I put in buttonholes. Not putting buttonholes on in the hoop. That's a different story. For that, I would use a different stabilizer. I probably will use a tear away or maybe even a tear and wash or something like that um, when I'm doing all of my buttonholes in a hoop and setting them up that way. But when I'm doing like single buttonholes with my buttonhole foot, I will put this behind any of the fabric that I'm using. I don't care how thick or how light it is. Odds are this is going behind the area where my buttonhole is. It is going to make that, um, it is going to move a little bit smoother and you will have, you'll notice that you'll get a better underneath uh, buttonhole um, stitch. So someone asked, what can you use with leftover stabilizers? Well, at any given time, you'll see some of these pieces by my sewing machine because I also use these as leaders. So for those of you who are not familiar with what a leader is, a leader is when you take a small scrap of fabric or something like that and you, you start stitching on that and then you move on to your, your fabric that you're going to stitch. Um, a lot of times a leader comes in handy when you're doing uh, the triangles. Uh, the name is half square triangles. You know, you have that little point. Well, even sometimes when you're using your straight stitch plate where you have that single hole, if you take that little corner up to your needle and you start stitching, that can still get sucked into your machine. So a lot of times people will use a leader, um, start stitching on that and then start stitching um, onto that point and going further. So I do use these as a leader. A lot of ladies like to have just scrap pieces of fabric as their leader. My issue is, is that every time I use a scrap piece of fabric as a leader, I end up sewing that to my project and then I have to pick it out. So with these scraps, you can just, you know, once this is, you know, once these are itty bitty pieces and they can't be used, then you, you toss those itty bitty pieces. But these pieces right here, ladies, these are excellent as leaders. And that goes for the same with your other stabilizers. So your tearaways, you can use those as leaders. Um, I would prefer not to use like a cutaway or something like that, because if I used a cutaway as a leader, it's almost just like using a, a small piece of fabric. I'm gonna have to pick that out with my seam ripper. And uh, sometimes I'll rip out of the first stitch or so of the actual project. So any of my tearaways, yep, I'm gonna use those as leaders and, and um, so, it's it's one way of recycling and let me tell you this roll is going to last you a very long time uh, i've also uh, known people and i am not a paper piecer but i know some ladies who will trace their paper piecing uh designs out on this because it's going to tear away a lot easier and it's uh than copy paper downfall this can't go through the printer so you would need to physically trace out your um, your pattern onto this. I've also used this um, for small to create small pattern pieces or trace off some on um, small pattern pieces. Stitch in the ditch also at one point came in a roll that's about yay long. So again, it's great for tracing out patterns and things like that because it is somewhat transparent. See, so it's 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 a staple in my sewing room. And it's, it's one of my um, favorites. So any questions on any of that? No? I think I went through all of the stabilizers that I wanted to talk about. So if you have any uh, anything you wanna add, if you have, if any of you have any suggestions that maybe I didn't say, we are a community here. So it's nice to hear what other people have been doing and not just, you know, these, these are all based on my experiences. Is it, is it in stone that this is what you should do? Nope, I, uh, I do lots of um, experimenting and see what works for me. Now, I will tell you, as I was um, going through uh, what stabilizers I wanted to focus on, I did go to some other websites and some other embroideries, and I was kind of snooping and seeing what they suggest of what stabilizers to do with, with some fabrics, and I didn't necessarily agree with all of what other sites were saying, and I'm not saying they're wrong, 
But for example, I went to one site and they had a list of all these fabrics and they had a stabilizer and they suggested a stabilizer. And most of it said, use a cutaway. All, all the fabrics I was looking at said cutaway, cutaway. And that's that's not necessarily true. A cutaway is not, is not your end all be all. It is not your universal um, stabilizer, if you will. And one of them suggested, I sew a lot, I'm Batiste. And one of them in the site suggested that I use a cutaway on Batiste. Now, I will tell you, I, I, I disagree with that because even, even if they're referring to something like a no-show mesh, it would um, still leave a shadow behind because you can't necessarily cut all of that super close to the stitching. So even a no-show mesh type stabilizer would leave a shadow. So for Batiste, I do use um, the Aqua Magic so it can wash it away. Most of the time when I'm embroidering on Batiste, it is, um, it is a very delicate design. So it doesn't need um, as much support um, after the embroidery is finished because it is delicate. What is the best stabilizer for doing lace? What, um, if you don't mind, can you elaborate a little bit more for, for lace? Um, are you embroidering on lace or are you creating in the hoop lace? Like you're, you're creating the lace. If you're creating the lace, um, then, and it's going to be like my butterflies back here and it's a, a lace, a freestanding lace, then I would definitely use Aqua Magic for that. That is the fibrous uh, wash away. If you're doing something where you're sewing laces together and you need something to support, that's when I would go for a uh, stitch in the ditch. So it just depends on what you mean by um, so, uh, doing laces. What stabilizer do you use on t-shirts? On t-shirts, most of the time, I'm going to go for um, something like a no-show mesh that is fusible. The fusible is temporary. So once you, so you would fuse it onto the area that you're going to embroider and hoop. You want to make sure that again, it fits the hoop. And, and I do try and, like I said, I'm a hooper. I'm going to try and hoop that t-shirt if I can. So I would fuse it onto the shirt itself and I would do my embroidery. And if you lightly heat it up, then you can peel that away and you can trim it close to the, close to the design. That way it won't um, have this big shadow through, but it's still going to support your embroidery. And again, when you think about t-shirts, t-shirts are not a very heavy knit. They are a thin knit. So you want to be conscious about what design you are putting on that t-shirt. You want something more closer to maybe appliques, um, red work, black work, um, open work, things like that. You do not want to put a heavy, dense uh, embroidery design on a t-shirt because if that's a heavy, dense design, what's going to happen is we'll look at my shirt here. It will eventually start buckling in and doing this. Um, and that will be a permanent thing because, you know, you may press it, but eventually as you're wearing it, it will start to buckle in. So just think about, also think about what, um, what design you're going to put on it. Uh, let's see. I have tried Tarot Magic and found it left a stain on the fabric after it dried. Have you ever had this problem? Unfortunately, no, I have not had that issue. Um, I, no, I haven't had that issue. When you use Tarot Magic, um, you want to test it uh, just like anything else. If you're putting it on a, a, a satin or maybe even a silk or something like that, um, it very well may discolor it. I don't know because the only time I've ever used Hero Magic was usually on um, a quilter's cotton for the most part. Um, I have used it on uh, some Batiste and, and again, haven't had an issue. I haven't had an issue, but you don't necessarily have to use Hero Magic where you saturate the fabric. You can just use a few spritzes and it'll still make um, the, the fabric pretty stiff. The only time I use Tereo Magic and, I, and I'm making it and I almost saturate the fabric is if I know that I'm going to cut that fabric down to eight and a half by 11 and I'm going to put it into um, my printer and do some printing on fabric. That's pretty much the only time I will make uh, use it so it's that stiff. 
hope that answers your question. Anybody else have any other questions? I hope you guys find, you everyone found this very helpful. Um, so let me tell you what's coming up next. Our next Two Severna Viking Facebook Live is um, September 7th at uh, 2 p.m. Central Time with me again. Um, and I will be inspiring you with some heirloom techniques using your sewing machine. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now, heirloom is not just for babies. Okay. So I hope you uh, join me uh, in, on, in September for that Facebook Live. And also our next My SoNet Facebook Live is August 30th. Um, August 30th and 31st of September. Um, oh, excuse me. September 1st is with Sonny with Just Beyond. Oh, it's a three-day workshop. I'm reading this wrong. So it's August 30th, 31st and September 1st with Sonny, uh, with Sonny Grint. And it's just beyond. Uh, so it's a three day workshop. How cool is that? So for any of you who are interested in my Sonet, or if you have my Sonet, Sonny is a genius when it comes to the software. So I would highly recommend that you stop in and visit Sonny and get some inspiration and some education as well. Okay. Well, everyone, I'm so glad that you spent your time with me, hopefully. Um, and just remember, you can always uh, go back and revisit this. It'll also be on uh, YouTube. And if you have questions about Stabilizer, remember, go download that app, the Joy OS, um, Joy OS Advisor. It is an awesome app. It has chock full of information. It is worth the five seconds it'll take you to download and install it. It, it i found it to be a great help especially when i'm out and about in town and i'm not sure you know what i should uh what needle or what stabilizer i need and also i don't know if you noticed but it also has um let me log back into here real quick it also has the accessory guide so you can also look up accessories. So if you're standing in your dealer shop and you're not quite sure what the accessory that you're trying to explain, you can always look it up. And it's also nice because you can look and say, oh yeah, I already have that accessory. It's a different one that I need. So it just it just has so much information, sewing instructions, quilting instructions, sewing instructions. So when you're sitting in the airport or you're on the bus or whatever, you can entertain yourself with um, the little videos and things that are built into it. So, all righty. Thank you again for coming. I appreciate it. And I hope to see you all next month. Have a good day. Bye.